I've been using the Ugreen dock for this Steam Deck for a good while now, and this has been my primary dock for most of my x86 gaming. This generally sits under my TV, so when I bring an x86 handheld with me and I want to finish a game when I get home, all I have to do is dock it onto this and it can go right out to my TV. I also usually use a 2.4 GHz controller adapter and I plug that in the side here. However, this dock has one specific issue, and that being that there's just not enough space in this dock for a console with a grip on it. When you try to connect a console to this that has a grip on it, it does reach, but it pulls on the cord too much, and that's because this adds a little bit of height to the bottom. That also makes this device stand straight up rather than lean back, so there's not enough space to plug this in. You technically could, but it would pull on the USB port, and I really don't want to do that to a device this expensive, especially when there's only one USB port. I do like the idea of being able to dock my handhelds when I get home so I can finish the game on my TV. If I have this under my monitor, I could use this as a main desktop. But how do I fix this? How can I get this to use a grip and still be able to dock it? When Avanki reached out to me to ask if I wanted to review this, I initially declined because there's just too many videos on docks right now. This might be a good solution for a lot of people because this actually does support grips. And if you have a grip on your handheld, this is probably the way to go. Let me show you why this dock is better than the Ugreen one in a lot of ways, and I do think that it's a viable solution. For me anyways, I am really excited to take a look at this because I don't like having to pull the grip off every single time that I want to dock the device. Let's take a look at the Avanki dock and see if it's worth it for you. Before we start the review, there's a few things that we need to talk about. This is the second dock that I've received from Avanki. Namely being, the issue with the first one was with 2.4 GHz controllers. Everything on this dock worked absolutely fine. It charged okay, and I could have a keyboard and a mouse. When I was using a 2.4 GHz controller, the controller would cut in and out, so I couldn't even use a controller. I tried switching it between the different ports, and unfortunately I couldn't get it working. And this one seems to have no issues whatsoever with the 2.4 GHz controllers. If you look ever so slightly, this does not seem to work well with my grip that I have on my Ally. This USB port is not deep enough, so unfortunately it'll fit in, but it doesn't go the entire way. If you push this ever so slightly, this will charge. And it doesn't seem to be bending on the USB port, but this is something to take note of. This should work with other grips if the top part up by the charger isn't too tall. But those are the only two things that I've noticed from my month using it. And I have been charging this with this grip on here, and I just wanted to jump in before we started the review just to let you know my update experience over the past couple of weeks. As mentioned, this was sent over by the company, but they're not seeing this review before it goes live, and all opinions are my own, and I'm going to give you my honest thoughts to what I think about it. This dock comes from a company called Avanki, and I've never heard of them before they reached out to me, but they do seem to make some very high-end docks for Mac. And they have two docks for the ROG Ally or the Steam Deck. So there's really no difference between these two aside from the little back cutout that might provide some better airflow. The one that we're looking at today though is this one here and it goes for 50 US dollars, which is pretty in line with what most of these docks are costing. The IO seems to be the same on the other docks, so both of them are the same price. They do also have a note on the website showing that you're supposed to get updated to the 323 or later or you can't use the turbo mode. My ROG Ally has been updated already to the latest version so I don't have that issue. If you are interested I do recommend picking this up from the main website. Unfortunately the shipping is really expensive at 21 US dollars bringing this to 71 US dollars. By today's currency, that comes out to 95 Canadian. That's almost $100 for a dock. I think this would be a little bit more easier to recommend if it was around 30 to 35 US dollars. 
Having 20 US dollars in shipping costs, especially to Canadians, that's pretty hard to justify. One thing that makes this stand out is the cable length on the back. There's a lot more cable length to this than there is on the Ugreen dock. The dock is going to pull some of the power, so you're going to get a max output of 85 watts if you're using a 100 watt charger. Alright, let's open the box and take a closer look inside. There's a fact sheet here that shows a couple different things. I believe this is referring to before the update, but we'll take a closer look to see if the ROG Ally supports 30 watt. Let's set that aside and see what else they sent. We also have a small user manual. There's not really much in here that we don't already know, so let's put this aside. We also have a small warranty card and some joystick caps for the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally. Under that we have the dock itself. And I gotta say, first impressions are really good. This feels absolutely solid. The entire thing is made out of aluminum, and the bottom part here has a soft rubber to it. The sides are plastic though, however, but I don't think that's gonna matter. The back is also aluminum, and on the bottom is also aluminum. We have some rubber feet here to stop it from sliding around. This is really nice. The top part where the device sits is also a soft rubber, so it doesn't scratch the back. On the back we have a USB-C for that 100 watt quick charge. We have three USBs capable of 5 gigabits per second with an HDMI that's capable of 4K60. We also have a 1 gigabit Ethernet jack. I really wish there was another type C on here because all we have is type A. That's okay though, since most of the accessories that people are using are USB-A, but it would be nice to have one more USB-C on here. Cable itself is braided and it feels pretty good. It is a little stiff. We have that angled connector just as we have with every other dock, and there's a cover on there as well. Starting with the smallest x86 handheld that I own, the iNeo Air, it fits really well on here. One thing I'm noticing though is since this cable is very stiff, it's actually lifting up the back of the USB cable, which is not good because that's putting the pressure onto the USB port. I do think this could have been fixed if they didn't use braided cable. So for smaller devices like this, it is going to work, but you might want to position that cable so it doesn't lift up on the back of the USB port. This unfortunately happens with the Steam Deck as well. You can see it immediately lift up as soon as that pressure is lifted off. Of course, this shouldn't really matter anyways because these USB ports are really durable. If this cable wasn't so rigid, you also wouldn't have this issue. Thankfully, this is pretty easy to fix. All you have to do is just kind of push the cable down like this and that shouldn't happen anymore. And that seems to be in there good now. So I'm not worried about that. But this is a good cable, and we got lots of space, especially for these big handhelds. Let's try a device with a grip on it. Because the ROG Ally is able to lean backwards a bit, we do get more room for this. We actually have enough space now, and you can see there's way more cable length than we're going to need, even with a grip on here. That plugs in really nice, and we still have lots of space as mentioned. If you wanted to use this for the ROG Ally, and you had a grip on there, you should be absolutely okay. I think this should work very well with the Steam Deck and their grips as well. So what do I like to use on the dock itself? Well, we got the power in, we got the HDMI of course, and the Ethernet jack. The first USB port that I want to use is for the mouse. Then I got one for a 2.4 GHz USB dongle. And the last USB port of course is going to be for the 2.4 GHz controller. So I have enough I.O. for all my needs. Let's connect this to the ROG Ally and see what display modes we can get. Got everything set up and this is my desktop on the ROG Ally. Let's see what we can get with the stock charger. I usually use 20 watts as my default mode for high end gaming. So let's see if it'll go up to 30 watts. And of course it does. So you can use the 30 watt turbo mode with the stock charger, which is really good. Let's see what kind of display modes we can get. So we got 4K and that's running flawlessly at 60 Hertz. So this is doing what it's advertised to do. Let's try 1440p and let's bump it up to 144. That's definitely not supported, at least on my capture card. But if you're connecting this to a TV, that 4K 60 is definitely going to work seems to have an issue going over 60 hertz but let's try 1080p to see if we can get over 60. 
Let's try 120 first. So 1080p, 120 isn't going to work on my capture card, even though it is advertised to do so. This wasn't really advertised by the dock itself anyways, but I just wanted to try it to see if it worked. Now that we've gone back to 60Hz, let's set that back to 4K60. I currently have it selected to 8-bit color, but let's see if it supports 10-bit. So it seems to cap out at 8-bit color, but we can use the full RGB. That's going to give us the best colors. So the dock seems to work, and it seems to do what it's supposed to. So overall, do I think this is a good dock? Absolutely. This fits the ROG Ally even with the Skull & Co grip, which is pretty chunky. If you're in the market for a good dock, and something that has good compatibility with everything that you're going to need, I think this is a pretty good way to go. I might actually start using this as my main dock, just because I do like using this grip here and there, especially when I'm on the go, and it's kind of a pain to take it off constantly. Which dock are you guys using right now? Let me know in the comments below. The dock is only going a couple degrees over ambient, which is really good. And this doesn't feel hot at all. I'm actually noticing that the warmest place on this is the center of the stand, but that's still not going over 27 degrees or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Braided cables are okay, but I don't know, just for me personally, I don't really like how stiff these cables get sometimes. The build quality is excellent though, and overall it is a good dock. I do think if you're in the market, this is definitely a good option, especially if you can get one on Amazon at a good price. For Canadians though, I would probably recommend looking at that Ugreen dock because it's just so much cheaper. Anyways, it was pretty cool to check out. Thanks again to Vanky for sending this over. Let me know what you think of the dock in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and as always, thanks for watching.